We got the story from Scanner at CNR.com. Rumble files lawsuit against media watchdog group when anti-free speech zealots lie to inflict intentional economic harm on our company. We have no choice but to hold them accountable. Video streaming platform Rumble has filed a federal defamation suit against two co-founders of a media watchdog group. I don't think it's fair to call them a media watchdog group. That's their language. Who wrote this story? Chris this Bartman. is Chris Bartman. Chris Bartman. You see, he's he's doing the right thing in trying to be honest and fair in labeling the group what you would assume them to be. If you understand what this group does, I would not call them a media watchdog group. I wouldn't either. Yeah, lying about uh, people and trying to engage in tortious interference is not media watchdog. Do it's, you? it's 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 you I, maybe maybe uh, a leftist or liberal political activism is probably fair to say. Mm -hmm. But uh, just just real quick to get to the opening context yeah, here. Yeah. Rumble is uh, suing these individuals because they claimed that Rumble uh, receives 90% of its funding through Google ads or something to that effect. And that's not true. Rumble says this is completely false. And they actually told them this is not true. And it's damaging to, the, to their brand because Rumble, their business is we are independent from big tech. So they said they know it's not true. They won't take it down. We're suing them for defamation, which means either these people knowingly, uh, knowingly posted lies and considering they've been informed, it's not true, that it seems that may be the case, or they have just reckless disregard for the truth. But these groups, uh, these individuals have gone after Steve Bannon, Charlie Kirk. I'm pretty sure uh, they go after you, right, Jack? Well, they go after post millennial human events. They right, sure right, right. do. But don't, do they have you listed as their, their insurrectionists? I'm on the list. Uh, I'd have to look. Let me, they let me came after us because of our work with Andy. and yeah, they, It's usually about Andy. Uh, yeah, they worked, they basically like, got Antifa to go after our advertisers and take oh, us no. down. Oh, no, you didn't make the list. Sorry, sorry, yeah. Jack. It's uh, Dan Bongino, Charlie Kirk, Tucker Carlson. Uh, we got Glenn Beck, St uh, uh, Steve, Bannon. Steve Bannon, and me. I reached out at one and point. And I don't even know why I'm on there. Wait, scroll down a little bit. It's just, just it's wild. What are you looking for? Well, because it's talking about the January 5th show of War Room, because I was sitting next to Steve on right, that but show. They, but yeah. so, didn't so make the cut. Didn't I'm like, cut, the why cut. am I on this list? They uh, claim I that, will try harder during the next insurrection, I promise. They, they argue that I'm one of the biggest proponents of the big lie. And the big lie is defined as Donald Trump claiming he actually won 2020. And I've always maintained that i've never heard that. you say that <laughs> I, I, I i i argued with bannon that it, i that I no that. literally yeah. <laughs> like twice yes. so uh like you I, guys went at it in the third hour too yeah yeah my, my position was like dude people keep saying biden can't get 85 million votes and i'm like you're correct trump got anti-vote like people weren't voting for biden don't don't think that but i i, I think what we saw was procedural but there were issue with, the, with those ballots I don't know about that. What I what I what I what I will what I will say is, if if you operate under the assumption that fraud is the reason you lost, you lose again. If you operate under the assumption that Democrats were changing rules in ways that greatly benefited them, and they did, you will you will win. For one, we we saw in Georgia, uh, Republicans lost the Senate race because there are people who are like, "What's the point of voting anyway? They're going to mm -hmm. steal it." No, no, we can't have that mentality. But anyway, without getting into all that stuff because we don't need to. The fact that they are arguing I made these claims. Now I you, you totally get why why they're being sued by Rumble, okay? This is not a media watchdog group. They're outright lying. Mm -hmm. I actually reached out to one of the board members in 2021 when they were uh, targeting Post Millennial and we were losing ad revenue and it was uh, it was not a pleasant moment. You and actually lost ad revenue? Yeah. Because of them? Yeah. How? Uh, because, because they went after our advertisers and our advertisers refused to advertise on the platform. Yeah. Wow. Because if an yeah. advertiser sees and, but any I of this out. is valid, yeah. they present but themselves they, as I asked a... them about it. I asked one of the board members about it directly and she responded and she said, as, um, she said, uh, as to advertisers being intimidated into dropping you, advertisers are not so easily scared. If they drop you, it seems worthwhile to look at why and make your choices about what or what not to do about it. Um, and she later said, uh, you know, keep your eye on the prize. What is so important is to consider why would an advertiser drop a publisher they think worthy of support? They wouldn't. So she ended up saying, you know, basically that publishers make these decisions and the people who um, where they advertise like post millennial mm -hmm. should make different decisions in order to keep the advertisers. Yeah. So it is an intimidation thing. For sure. I mean, yeah. it. If they you, admitted it. And they also said, in part, that their goal is to destroy the ad tech 
business entirely. Yeah. I mean, if they are not open about what their political leanings are, then or even if they are, they can still be accepted as a as a mainstream reference, right? Mm-hmm. You'll have things so, all the time that are say, oh, you're on the SPLC's list of whatever, and so we can't trust your opinion. You're on this group's thing, so we can't advertise with you. These lists are created so that they become taken as, you know, the, as gospel. As and gospel. Never yeah. trust any, you know, conservative that doesn't get ended up on one of these lists or doesn't get attacked by any of these people. <laughs> I want to ever trust them. I want to pull up uh, this post from them so you can understand this is what Rumble is suing. They tweeted, in case you're wondering where Tim Pool's been, Right-wing podcaster Tim Pool isn't selling ads anymore after a successful Check My Ads campaign. He's selling dot 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 coffee, and we found out who makes the beans. Uh, here's the thing: oh, did you? we 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 are we are selling ads. We have we've never lost a sponsor. Uh, we have all our sponsors still. We I, we literally just recorded several ads. What on on what day is it? It's Wednesday Monday. on Monday. On Monday, I'm like, everyone yep. get out. We're recording ads for the same sponsors. We yep. just finalized another six-figure sponsorship deal. They're outright lying and using the lies to make money to convince people to donate wait so because i i remember seeing that when when they posted that or or you know you were tweeting at them or something and then i would went back and i was thinking like so sometimes if i don't catch the show live i'll go back and listen on the podcast side and i'm like they're, they're all there like you you can hear it it's totally normal and it's been that way for i don't know years at this point so We've been doing mostly over the past few months direct reads for uh, Cast Brew Coffee, mm-hmm. obviously, because we're building up our own company, which is probably going to crack over a million dollars in revenue revenue in its first year. So in a, in, a, in, a, in a conspiracy to profit, you've created a <laughs> company and you're using your other company to leverage that new company. I mean, this is this is this is the most nefarious thing I've ever heard. So currently, we have uh, our same ad sales rep for we used we used to do more live reads during the show. Now it's all just the recorded. Right. So if you guys listen on this, on the podcast, you'll get the recorded ads where it's like that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Better help and 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 uh, the, the sponsors are all still there, and we actually do really well. Mm-hmm. We like substantially. They are outright fabricating this, and I I will add, the only reason. We did not, we, we've not done live reads specifically, despite the fact we still have all these sponsors asking us when we will, is because we're trying to promote as much as possible Cast Brew. But we actually did a deal for some live reads on the show again. Like, what, so you see what they use deceptive language. First of all, they said, I'm not selling ads anymore. Totally false. We're absolutely selling ads. We still have all the same sponsors. Yeah. And we just finalized a six figure deal with a new sponsor. Mm-hmm. So that is factually incorrect it is it is it is absolutely false and they say after a successful check my ads campaign uh, is that fraud they're I feel fundraising like it off is. this I, it doesn't make sense to me also because i mean did they call, did they get in contact with you? like where did they find out that you weren't selling ads obviously if they had done any kind of research that would have been false they, they could contact sort of, our ad sales they people. sort of were like oh tim's not talking about something so we've decided like so it doesn't they, make any sense how but, but, they, uh, but if you, if how you listen to the, if you listen they take donations so there's c3 yes if you listen to the audio yeah. podcast there's i think 10 ads like from a ton of different sponsors yes yeah, that's a lot. and they're fundraising off the yeah, lie some of it's that you, we don't some of it's inserts some of it's like donuts right. some all, all different things it seems weird. It's donuts just for, is a style like, of wild. ad, folks. He's not actually advertising donuts. It's when they send you. I mean, part, I, I you put, what are that's when you like when they send you part of an ad and then you insert something and then you know. Yeah. So mean. here's here's the way it works. Uh, some ad sales are like, hey, we have an ad, we want to run it on your show. It's like, all right, great, we have an ad, we have an ad company that we have a management company that handles that. Right. We just choose where on the show to put it, and then a few of our sponsors, our bigger sponsors, they say we want Tim Pool to read this personally. Correct. We say you got it, and that costs obviously a little bit more. And then for this show, we actually have all of our sponsors. We used to do reads for like Virtual Shield. There's um, SafeAndReadyMeals.com. There's uh, what else do we have? Um, the like protein energy thing. Oh right, we got the collagen. Yeah, we have just, yeah, we have the uh, we have the, the the camping gear and stuff. Yeah. yeah, all of these sponsors are still there. And and I've we we've actually been I've been I've been talking to the ad sales guy about end of the year sales to pick back to bring them back in because i'm like look we've been doing casper this whole time anyway i digress i I digress yeah because usually my contracts run like you like so it's like january to january so yeah so at this point we do monthly we're going into really yeah 
every month we renegotiate and that I, I like it better because i'm like look you know we had a great month this month's gonna be bigger we want more money yeah, 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 yeah. so well uh, i shouldn't say all most my uh, ad my have. ad guy just sent me like a december pitch and i said yes <laughs> and they're like this is insane it's just absolutely insane that these groups lie I, I, look i guess they have success in some areas like you guys were losing money I'm like, what are they talking about? I never promoted the big lie. I never claimed Trump won. And we we still sell ads. Yeah. Yo, this is wild. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know, man. Like, do, do I have to pursue some kind of like criminal charge, like fraud charges against them? Because it, I, or I guess what you'd have to do is find someone who donated to them because they believed this organization had negatively impacted our business. They also have a tweet up claiming that, that our website's demonetized, which it's what? literally not. <laughs> what, dude? It's crazy. Uh, you know what, man? Whatever, though. But Rumble's suing them because they're doing the same thing. They claim that Rumble is operating off Google ads, and, and Rumble's like, no, we aren't. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I, will, I will add, uh, well, I shouldn't say too much, but uh, what I can say is Rumble has, has their own ads that appear on Rumble. Wild. This is, this, this is what these activists do. They claim to be an organization that fights disinformation, but literally all they do is manufacture it. Also, they're a not-for-profit. Their their 501c3 status mm -hmm. is pending. And I just wonder what is so charitable about this organization that tax dollars should be going to this group. Right. I mean, Why well, is the they're IRS allowed, the tax dollars don't go to it. They just don't no, pay taxes. No, they just don't pay taxes on it. Exactly. They're just claiming that they're doing a public service by, you know, telling you what's going on and the public has more information this way. You know, they'll get their 501c3 status because ultimately the people who give to them are the same people who give to the political leaders who are in charge right now. I mean, they they see it as a benefit to their own mission. And that's why they can send you a, emails being like, well, if you were better at publishing better stuff, then your advertisers wouldn't pull out. It's not that we bullied them. It's just we decided that you were uh, an unwanted organization and told them that. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It feels very dystopian to me. Like, listen, Me you know, grants. And individual and, and, and individual donations. The company does. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I'm looking up their uh, their filings. That was the weird thing about hearing Elon Musk talk, which is that he's saying, you know, the advertisers believe they can ultimately get me to do what they want. Even mm -hmm. even Sorgan opening up with, well, you're sort of on this apology tour. And I mm -hmm. felt like I could watch Elon Musk tense and be like, I'm absolutely not on an apology tour. I am not going to admit that you guys or or. or uh, admit wrongdoing. Admit wrongdoing, or just partake in this in this manipulation of what yeah, you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the weird thing is that ultimately advertisers need the eyes, and the eyes are going to stay on Twitter, meaning that the users are staying on Twitter, even if the advertisers pull off. Right? Like the mm -hmm. engagement on Twitter didn't dip because the advertisements went away. Ultimately, to me, it seems like someone else will rise up and take those spots back, or they'll come back because that's where the crowd is. Mm -hmm. Wild. Yeah. It's 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 it. This is what we're up against. Well, and Texas is sell, is uh, the Texas AG is suing Media Matters. You he is he is suing. Yeah, he's investigating. he was investigating. investigating. He's investigating, investigating, investigating Media Matters. So in Texas, they can't bring it's it, their AG is situated a little bit differently. Like he has to pass off a criminal case to someone else. They can't bring them themselves like they can. You can in some states. Um, same with civil. And so Missouri was a huge one because they were able to bring direct action. Um, but it's it's just a great example, right? So. Look at the Trump cases that are going on right now all from the left. Um, you've got the attorney general of New York finding any pretext to go after him, literally any pretext to go after him, his company, his family, even things that didn't even happen in her state. She's finding a way to make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you see this with Fannie Willis. You see this again and again. The One of the best from his perspective, one of the most strategic uh, and most efficient uses of money that George Soros ever did was in funding all of these people. Because for a couple million bucks here and there, you compare that to like the Coke industry, uh, the Coke brothers who spent billions, like uh, just just dry, drowning our country down the tubes. And now they want to throw all this money behind Nikki Haley. Now they're Haley, backing Haley. It's that, so crazy. And you compare that to just a couple of million bucks that George Soros spent in key targeted races, whereby in he's now able to have the president of the United States arrested, uh, he's able to have the front runner for the Republican nomination be put under a series of trials. So all of this is going on. Meanwhile, Republicans will sit back and go, oh, we can't do anything like that. That's not fair. You know, you've got all of these organizations. Uh, look what they did to the NRA. 
Look what right. Letitia James did to the NRA and just completely castrated them in front of everyone. Sure, they still exist on paper, but they're so much more castrated than they've ever been in terms of the 2A fight right now at a time where, you know, just to be frank about it, you know, the Republican Party needs single issue voters. Look at how the Democrats are utilizing single issue voters when it comes to abortion and turning that into a massive ballot harvesting operation. The NRA could be doing that if they existed or had any any serious operations right now. Just doesn't exist after what Letitia James did. And Republicans will sit there and say, oh, that's not fair. Meanwhile, Democrats are saying, let's strip Trump off the ballot. Let's find mm -hmm. any way that we can destroy you guys and keep pressing the advantage. Because again, Democrats know how to use government power. Mm -hmm. They will use government power. And Republicans are terrified. So I threw out there. And not to get into like the primary stuff, if you want to, um, we're, we're about to actually. That, okay, yeah. well, I, was gonna, I threw out there that that a guy like Ron DeSantis would never even like he would be physically terrified to utter the words, "I'm going to have Joe Biden stripped from the ballot in Florida." Yep, and. You know, he has full power in the state, super legislature. You know, he could easily file a charge from his campaign saying that Biden is ineligible and you find pretext under the fact that he that he took bribery from China, which is yep. an impeachable offense. And he could say, therefore, you are not eligible to run for president under the Constitution and you could file that lawsuit. And this guy, he would be terrified to do that because and you can say it's not the stones, not the backbone, whatever. It's just no. he is a pedantic rule follower. He's terrified of actually standing up for himself himself and fighting back and it's why like he'll go on laura ingram and can't even you know can't even name ronna mcdaniel and mm -hmm. say oh i'm ter I, you know terrified to do this you could see laura like rolling her eyes at him and my my point is that it's, it's not even an anti-desantis thing it's just that there's a lot of republicans like this they are terrified to actually use government power well let's jump to this story from the daily mail you know what this means exclusive u.s military is seeing ufos in space official report says and that can only mean one thing hunter biden was caught with weird money laundering again fox news reports money laundering investigator warned of hunter biden's unusual erratic payments from china in 2018 the bank investigator raised concerns about money that ultimately funded the forty thousand dollar payment to joe biden comer says so uh of course, there's a big UFO story coming out coming out on the same day that there is a mysterious Chinese payment to Hunter Biden in the news. Surprise, surprise. And uh, looks like Fox News website is completely broken. The best part about this story was <laughs> that the uh, the people who the bankers that flagged the payments said that there was um, no obvious services rendered. <laughs> I love that. Who knows? So, what are they paying think, for? Do you think the UFO people are sad that? the thing they love and are passionate about has been ruined by the Biden administration. Yes. No, you think? I think they must be, right? I think they're like, just stoked that people are talking no, about it. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. There was a Tucker the UFO, show about it. No, no, the UFO people turned on Fox News and they reported Hunter Biden and they immediately called their friends and said, we got UFO news coming. <laughs> they're like, brace yourselves, it's about to happen. <laughs> Maybe well, that's good. Hunter Biden's in the news. Because I was thinking, if you're a UFO person, you're like, the, the Biden administration is just releasing all kinds of fake information under the guise of UFOs to distract from Hunter. But maybe the the information they're releasing is legitimate. And that way you can really distract people. You know what I mean? Like, are they making stuff up to cover up hun it's, Hunter's it's, crimes? They're stretching nonsense. They have these minor reports where it's like a guy saw a thing. Who knows? Mm -hmm. And now they're like, look over here. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.